Russian surprise attack on Sweden to take the island of Gotland in the Baltic Sea. That's the topic of the day. My name is Max Willman. I'm a former fighter pilot in the Swedish Air Force and let's go. So what we are going to react to today is a video released by the Grim Reapers. Uh, the Grim Reapers are a YouTube channel and they are playing the game called DCS or Digital Combat Simulator. DCS is a military uh, aviation simulator where you can fly different kinds of fighter jets. Uh, they also have uh, uh, ground-based air defenses, ships, etc. Et so it's a, a quite a f fun game in that sense. I have been flying the AGS-37, the Viggen, uh, at one time. And I think I will do some more videos about that later in the future. But let's uh, take a look at uh, the video. So um, this is the overview. And it's uh, what they call a war game number 173 i will put a link uh, down in the description here uh, for you guys and this has been a highly requested video uh, from many of my uh, viewers and if you have a request you can leave uh, your requests uh, down in the comments and also while you're in there uh, make me a solid favor and give me a thumbs up a like to the video and subscribe to the channel uh, so what we see here is uh, basically the baltic sea you have gotland uh, the island here in the middle of the baltic sea swedish and you have the uh, basically the border of the swedish landmass uh, over here you have uh, uh, the baltics uh, baltic states uh, finland you have the go for finland with russia up here and so the scenario is a surprise attack by russia on sweden uh, and before we get into uh, the video let's talk a little bit about uh, how that can come to pass. So one of the main uh, reasons that you have a big military intelligence in Sweden is so that we can detect uh, if there's uh, some, some sort of build-up going on, uh, especially in Russia, so that we can make the appropriate measures to uh, take care of that. So if we, for example, see uh, that they... Uh, let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, if we see that they are gathering their Rapuchas, their landing ships, uh, in their ports in Kronstadt, for example, and they're actually loading them with... Um, tanks and infantry and so on and so forth they are uh, bringing in uh, uh, ships that are very very good at uh, uh, yeah surface fighting ships uh, they're bringing them together they are mustering their um, uh, their sailors and so on they're bringing up ammunition preparing uh, flights from their airfields etc then we have a picture that something is about uh, to happen ex at, uh, at least that something could happen uh, so for something to happen you need the possibility and you need the, the will. So if we see that they are gathering the possibility to strike us, then we can take uh, measures to, uh, uh, to be in a better position. Basically, we can increase our readiness in different kinds of things. We can uh, st start to disperse our uh, ships, our uh, airplanes to different bases. We can uh, start preparing ammunition. We can call up, uh, uh, par partly mobilize, etc., etc. So we have a lot of things in our toolbox. Uh, and that is exactly what we probably would do if, if uh, we see those kinds of things. Uh, so we have a military intelligence to establish a, a sort of a normal situation so that if you have something extraordinary, for example, if they bring up five reports and fill them with troops, then that is something that will be uh, above the normal uh, the normal uh, line. And then we will probably need to analyze that even further uh, to increase our intelligence and so on and so forth. So that's why uh, military intelligence is so important, and Sweden has a big one. Uh, we also have uh, FRA, which is a, a separate uh, government agency that uh, manages uh, signal intelligence in Sweden. We have signal intelligence ships, uh, we have signal intelligence uh, aircraft, of course. Uh, and then you can have open source intelligence, you have human intelligence, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things in the toolbox to create a picture of what is normal. And if something is not normal or out of the ordinary, then we can take measures to increase our own readiness so that we are not, never caught off guard. So one thing the enemy can do to combat this is to create a new normal level. So if the, new, uh, if the normal level of activity is here, then they can create a higher normal level of activity for some time. Uh, and in that case, sort of make us go up on our toes. But as, as this is the new level, then we will probably, uh, yeah, it, it's expensive to have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, readiness at the same time. So after a while, perhaps we might uh, taper that off. Uh, so that's exactly what the Israelis did. Um, I think it was in the 60s or 70s. I'm, I'm a bit unsure, but uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. But basically what they did is they established a new normal uh, where they gathered a large portion of their fighter aircraft together and flew out over the sea, Mediterranean, did some exercise and then went home to land. And they did that repeatedly for several days. 
and in the beginning uh, the Egyptians uh, they were on high alert because this was a new normal a new thing that this did not, was not normal but after a while this became the new normal so they tapered off their uh, readiness and that's when the Israelis actually used one of these sorties to actually strike the Egyptians and take out basically their entire air force so this is something that the attacker can do they can establish a new normal and then when we have basically become, become accustomed to it, then they can use that to strike. So that's something that the military intelligence needs uh, to be uh, aware of, of course. And let's also talk a little bit more about uh, the island of uh, Gotland here. So why is Gotland so uh, important? This is Gotland here, uh, the airfields are not in the right position. You have Visby here, the capital of Gotland. It's, yeah, it's a very, very small capital at that, but uh, the only real big town, or big, uh, the only real town uh, with an airfield. You can also use road bases around the, the airfield, of course, for, for the gripen, but uh, it's not in the same position as on the map. But uh, the island is in the same position, and let's say that Russia would want to make an operation against the Baltic states, then they could uh, start their operation by taking Gotland and also shutting down the Suvalki corridor before, between Kaliningrad and, uh, and Belarus. So if they would take Gotland, uh, they would basically be able to ferry over uh, S-400 uh, GBAD systems uh, and then long-range anti-ship systems. And they could create this sort of a big bubble of uh, area denial or denial uh, so that no one could go in with ships or no one could go in with, um, with aircraft without high risk. So if they would start their operation by doing that and also seal the Savalki corridor, then the Baltic states would be basically very, very difficult to... Uh, reinforce uh, for NATO, so that's why Gotland is such a such an interesting island uh, for uh, for Russia and therefore also for NATO and yeah for Sweden as well. Uh, so uh, Gotland is uh, one of the key factors when it comes to controlling the the Baltic states. It's basically a uh, a carrier uh, that's uh, always there. Uh, so Gotland is very important, so it's not unlikely that uh, that uh, uh, operation against the Baltic states from Russia's side would start with an operation against Gotland. Uh, and then when it comes to other bases, you see here Lidköping, which is actually Sotenäser, you have Ronneby, you have Uppsala, those are all uh, Swedish military bases. We also have a military base uh, around here in Linköping. Uh, but the thing with, with Swedish uh, tactics is that we can, as soon as the, we have indication of something coming, we can start to disperse to our war bases, we can disperse to civilian airfields. So there are basically hundreds of uh, locations that we can be in. And we can also hide on the roads near the airfields and then taxi out to the airfields when we want to start. So uh, that, that's one of our tactics that we will be very, very difficult to find, very, very difficult to neutralize. Because one thing is that if Russia does this, then the more of the Swedish Air Force, uh, the Swedish Navy, submarines, and uh, also the uh, uh, coastal batteries that can fire uh, uh, RBS-15s, we will see in a minute here, uh, the more of us that is left, the more risk it is for the Russians to try something. So uh, if they would want to do something, they would even do it as a surprise attack like this, or they would have to do uh, a sort of preemptive striking uh, time where they would use cru cruise missiles, uh, aircraft, etc., to try to bomb and destroy as much as possible of our bases, of our aircraft, of our navy uh, before actually attempting this. But this time they haven't done anything, so we have everything available. You see here the grippens, etc. Uh, the RBS 15 KA, that's a coast artillery version, and that's basically RBS 15 anti ship missiles mounted on trucks. We will take a look at them. Uh, for the Russian side, uh, a notable thing is the MiG-29 KR. This is an updated version of the MiG-29, basically the M version, but naval one. I don't even think they have 24 of those in total. But um, yeah, and if it was a real uh, attack against Sweden, I would imagine that they would also use the best that they have, like SU-35s, SU-30s, and more SU-24s, etc., to really overwhelm us. The Rapuchas are the ones that are transporting the landing, uh, the infantry and the tanks. Gorskov, six of them, uh, that's one of the best or the best uh, uh, GBAD or ground-based uh, air defense or surface-based air defense ships that the Russians have. A-50 is, of course, uh, radar uh, AVAX. Uh, these are strategic bombers and they could fire their missiles actually from over Russian territory. That they wouldn't even have to uh, come out here. Uh, so basically that's how it looks. And if we take a look at... Um, how the uh, thing starts. I will leave a link down in the description. You can watch the entire thing yourself. You will not pay for it. And the Swedish are defending as well. The Corvette fired RBS 15s. Also, the RBS 15s will be launching their uh, units as well. Here is the coastal battery, and this was actually 
uh, we actually removed this we, we, uh, uh, in the 2000s, early 2000s. And now we have actually brought them back just so they're just being brought back. And you see it's very similar to uh, HIMARS in that sense, but against ships. So you can be everywhere where there's a road you can be. So it's very, very difficult to find and attack us until we decide to actually fire our own missiles. And then it's, it's basically too late for, for the enemy. Well, shortly. Most of the information will be garnered from the scoreboard at the top right viewers. So a Russian has fired. And now I just want to take a look here. At 14 anti ship missiles. Yeah. So here you have a Vispi Corvette, which is basically a stealth uh, type Corvette. And here also. And then you have the uh, road based or the ground based uh, RBS 15 missile launchers. So you see that everyone is firing at the same time here, which makes it so that we can get a lot of missiles uh, towards the target at the same time. You could also, in real life, you'd probably use the Grippens with RBS 15s at the same time. So you would have a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, RBS 15s arriving at the enemy ships at the same time, making it very, very difficult for them to shoot down every one of these uh, uh, anti ship missiles and increasing the likelihood of the ship missiles hitting their target. So the more missiles you fire, the higher PK or probability of kill you actually uh, get. 24 cruise missiles. Sweden has fired 15 anti-ship missiles. Let's have a little look at those missiles. We've got the supersonic P-800 Onyx. We've got the subsonic uh, caliber cruise missiles. We've got the RBS Mark IV Swedish anti-ship missiles. Let's have a quick look at the uh, aircraft. Oh, well, the uh, Gripen's are already up from Gortlands, the um, human pilots. The Let's uh, go around. And here you have the Kinshal, which is actually a ballistic hypersonic missile. So they would fire in a sort of a ballistic uh, trajectory. Uh, so it wouldn't be fired like this, but uh, for the sake of, of this video, that's how it looks. And uh, this, these are very, very difficult to uh, to shoot down. But uh, the uh, Ukrainians have managed it using Patriot. So they, the Russians targeted the Patriot battery with Kinshals. So it basically came down towards... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, towards the Patriot battery to destroy it. But um, uh, the Patriot ma ma battery managed to destroy a couple of these uh, King Charles. So uh, that's quite interesting to note. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult uh, to target these uh, missiles with with normal uh, type of uh, ground-based air defense systems. Uh, let's take a look again here. Uh, and as you see here, these are anti-ship missiles. They are targeting the Vispi Corvettes, uh, so they will probably be destroyed. Uh, I think with the Vispi Corvettes is that they are, unfortunately, not that well uh, It is defended. just a Corvette. It uses the CAM air defense missile. It's actually a... Uh, here you see the Vispi Corvette. It has one gun to, uh, to fire, so it will probably uh, shoot uh, shrapnel or shoot uh, things that detonate from the gun and create shrapnel, and hopefully the uh, anti-ship missile flies into the shrapnel. Uh, you can also fire other types of things like a toad. You can have the toad decoy. You can use electronic warfare to try to jam the radar of the ship missile. Uh, unfortunately, many of the modern anti-ship missiles they have home on jam functionality. So if they are jammed, they home in on the jammer, uh, which in this case would be the Vispi Corvette. So it wouldn't help that much. Uh, you can also shoot uh, uh, chaff. So basically, small, small. Uh, pieces of uh, metal that create a big, big, big radar uh, echo for the um, missile. So it would detonate in that instead of in the uh, in the cord. So there's a lot of things that they can do, but uh, it's a pretty uh, yeah. It's not as defended as you would like. And if you have many ships, you can work in tandem together. So yeah, uh, and the, seeing the number of missiles fired towards this Vispi Corvette. Uh, kind of British missile. Something's happening. It's firing. It's oh, it's shooting it with his gun. Look at that. But it just can't get enough of them. Look at that. Absolutely outclassed. It's First, bad. Visby destroyed. Great ships. Visby is a great ship, uh, especially for its size and for the amount of cost. But there is only... So it can't do miracles. Okay, here we go. We've got some cams coming up. Uh, based on... Oh, interesting colour. Based on the, um, the Azram, actually. Air to air missile. Can it take out the King Charles? Visby down. Hit by hypersonic missile. Right, okay. Next, uh... It looks like the cams are going to have no effect against the hypersonics today. In real life, these will actually come down a lot of sea viewers. It's all That's been long range about, exchanges, uh, and um, everyone's seen fit to do what they need to dodge. Oh, lots of missiles being fired. Three bases are now sending out their Gripens, which are now in action. I've managed to miss it, but they will pump out um, one aircraft every 30 seconds, firing their meteors. Also, we have the anti-shippers here with their uh, RBS 15s, and these guys down here, air defense fighters. Two Gripens shot down. Well, Russians doing pretty well so far. I suspect oh. 
And the thing that you can also uh, do in the Swedish tactics is that you can uh, take off from wherever and then you can land to refuel uh, somewhere else uh, and then you can go up again. So you have a lot of dis uh, dispersed airfields available and a lot of uh, places where you can uh, rearm and recharge. And you can do hot refueling as well. So it's quite quickly to use up your fuel and then get down to the closest airfield, uh, get new fuel and then go up again in the fight. There goes the MiG-29. One MiG-29 down, three Greepens down. I'm trying to see the kills for your viewers. I just missed him by Nats. Wee wee. Three MiGs down. Three MiGs down. Wow, that's gone quick, guys. Three MiGs down, three Greepens. And this is um, the uh, Russian uh, equivalent of the Amram missile. So the uh, yeah, R-77 or AA-12B, Bravo. Uh, and here you see a Gripen being destroyed by one of these missiles. And this is a boost missile like the Amram. So it has a big boost uh, uh, part in the beginning. Then it uh, basically glides after that. Uh, the grip in here and uh, normally you have a radio warning receiver so you see if someone is looking at you uh, so if a mig 29 is looking at that you would see that and then if this uh, missile then opens up its radar you would also see that on your warning receiver so then you would probably make evasive actions you can use chaff as well but and you would not want to stay such a high altitude as this uh, uh, grip and because you want to force the missile to come down into the heavier air so that it bleeds its energy but because he's so high up, uh, he's basically a sitting duck. So you would want to make evasive maneuvers long before uh, this part. Three down, four reapens down. The exchange, they fire these huge batteries. And then you see here what the Russians are doing quite well at this point is that they have fired a large salvo of cruise missiles. I think these cruise missiles are towards the airfield here. Uh, and if you if you do that, uh, then you probably want to escort it as well, like they do here, because these are subsonic uh, cruise missiles. And basically, if you just shoot them and they go towards uh, Gotland, then we can scramble our fighters. We can shoot down the cruise missiles uh, without any, basically, any hurry. But if you do it like the Russians do here, they're basically escorting. They are in the air, firing, uh, yeah, firing with their weapons at us, so that we become defensive. Then it takes, uh, yeah, it's more more unlikely that we will have the capability to fight the MiG 29s at the same time as targeting the cruise missiles. So. Um, in that sense, the Russians uh, need to push out forward to basically protect their strike package of uh, cruise missiles here. Actually, these missiles at 100 miles for you, isn't it? And they're doing that in minutes know, quite well, to get to target. But when they do, they're freaking deadly. Yeah, same thing here. He's too high up. We've been not quite as good kinematically as... If... You see here, if we just go back uh, a couple of seconds here. You see 25,000 feet, 29,000 feet. So that's a good altitude to be to fire your own missiles, to give them good kinematic performance. But... Uh, when you have other missiles, enemy missiles so close to you, you want to be much, much lower uh, than that. So these pro two are probably also getting uh, Good killed. kinematically, as if Migus doesn't seem to make much difference at the moment, though. Wow, actually, that's says six Greepens down. Huge attrition at the moment. Three MiG-29s down. Let's go and have a look at these uh, uh, Meteors and Meteors yeah. and the RF-77s are self-guiding missiles that will guide on the data links. Uh, I've got to think about anti-shipping at some point as well. Uh, I knew this was going to be a hard one to watch, viewers. Right, that seems to have settled down. Uh, that was equal. Five MiGs went down, six... And now you also see, even though they managed to destroy the MiG-29s here, uh, the MiG-29s have gotten off their uh, missiles here. So you have several uh, R-77s or A-12 Bravos uh, being fired uh, that are in the air, basically protecting these cruise missiles, because these missiles here uh, will protect uh, and threaten. They will open their seekers and they will um, illuminate these Gripens here so that they will need to take the ev evasive action. And if they are making evasive action, they cannot engage the cruise missiles. So uh, firing this uh, sort of... Uh, escort by firing their missiles towards the Gripens here uh, increases the likelihood that these cruise missiles will actually not be uh, destroyed by, by the Gripens. So this is a good tactic, even though uh, the MiG-29s were shot down, they managed to get their missiles off. So you don't need to actually destroy all the enemy fighters uh, to make sure that your own cruise missiles and bombers get through. You just need to make sure that you threaten them en enough during the time uh, which uh, the um, uh, bombers and the cruise missiles are close uh, to the fighters. Gripens went down. Seven Gripens went down. Where is it happening? Where is the killing happening? It must be over here. There must be some shooting over here. Pumping out more R-77s. The Russians are split. The tactical situation goes to the Blues, which can pincer, obviously, today. The Russians if get pretty good radars the, uh, from the ships. Here you see our RBS-15 flying quite low. Also a cruise missile, basically, but against ships. And here you see the ships here. So I'm not so surprised. 11 Gripens down. 9 MiG-29s down. So the air war is still pretty so even. So. And I would rate these fighters more or less even overall. And here you see the uh, S-BAD fired from the Gorshkov, and they have quite a good uh, view here. There's not enough, basically not enough RBS-15s coming in uh, to be a threat. I don't think any of these anti-ship missiles are going to get through, viewers. No, 
my first battery of RBS 50. So basically, uh, having so many uh, Gorshkov class uh, here, they are very, very good uh, G-Bad or S-Bad uh, uh, ships. Uh, so if you want here, you could probably fire with uh, Grippens and with uh, Corvettes and with uh, coastal batteries at the same time. You can try to reroute your uh, RBS 15s around the Gorshkov so you don't get shot down. Or if you want to attack the Gorshkovs, then you probably want to take one at a time from one side. So you don't go into the middle where all the Gorshkovs can fire mm -hmm. and be a part of uh, protecting each other. So uh, you'd probably need some sort of smarter tactic than the AI is, in, uh, is using uh, right here. Dean's taken down. 11 Greepens down. 10 mig Granny 9s down. It's pretty much even. Right, I thought I'd go and have a look at the uh, cruise missiles, haven't I? Another Greepin down. Flew right into that one. Same time here. No evasive action. Just flying straight ahead. Uh, high altitude is uh, a good way to get killed. Had no excuse. Stubbornness, that was. Swedish stubbornness. Okay, the um, RBS uh, 15s are firing again. You want to ask me why don't they fire all at once? Well, they don't. Their doctrine is not to fire at once. They fire in salvos, uh, and that is what they're doing. They're firing in salvos. Right, cruise missiles are now. And here's also, yeah, firing some, just two uh, RBS 15s, and then, uh, like, 30 seconds later, another two. It's not the best way to, to do it, basically. You should fire as many as, uh, as once as uh, possible. 40 miles out from the Gotland Air Base. So the X-65s, 120 miles out. Still huge exchange, massive. Oh, here comes some meteors. Haven't seen any meteor kills yet. Really good. You're and here you see the meteor. It has actually, it's more than a, more like a cruise missile than a normal air to air missile. Uh, it has a sustain. So the other uh, types of uh, air to air missiles usually have a boost phase and then they glide. But the meteor has a ram, uh, it's a ramjet. So they take in air and they actually uh, have a continuous uh, uh, burner, uh, which European weapons uh, we use them on our Euro fighters in UK. They operate very differently to the R seventy seven. Good kill. Oh wow, they're coming back now. The Sweden pincer is finally working. Uh, Thirteen Mig twenty nines down to twelve Gripens down. Let's have a look here. Are you shooting the missiles, Poosh? And here you have the exact thing that we were talking about. Uh, let's go for a little bit. Uh, yes, shooting the missiles, Poosh. Here. Uh, so the cruise missiles are here and they are not defended, so then it's just one grip in here unfortunately, but uh, then you are able to go in and fire IR missiles and so on and so forth towards these uh, cruise missiles. They are flying quite low, but they are definitely detectable and they are uh, subsonic, so you can, if you have a good intercept angle, you can actually target them with, with your own air-to-air -air missiles. Saviour of Gotland! Well done! It's fully legal and it is absolutely possible in real life, viewers. These are not self look, he's just smashing his way through these missiles. Well done, Poosh. He could take them with his Asrams, he could take them with his Meteors, he could take them with his RSTs, he could also kill them with his guns, and it looks like he's going to. Oh, so much to follow. Loads of um, MiGs have gone down recently. 13 to 12 with three ships down and no naval units destroyed in the Russians. I've got to have a sip of tea, viewers. Mm. Smash the uh, Calibre. Here you see, oh wow, here's an Irish T and, and uh, a Calibre. And this shows what happens when you put humans in the mix. In single so you have uh, Irish T G bad here based at the def uh, at the base, and you see when uh, they fire their R uh, RBS 98s, uh, they are quite little towards this caliber because there's not enough. Well, player, this did not happen. These missiles got through viewers. You see the RBS is launching. Let me try and see it. It's these guys here. They're firing RST SLS missiles. Good missiles, but they only have a range of about 10-ish miles. VLS launched, omnidirectional, obviously. And the first wave of cruise missiles has been defeated, all by hard work from Poosh and Cannibal. Well done, boys. They saved so far. 20 Reapens down, 18 MiG 29s down. I'm trying to find a place for my microphone where it's bringing for that place. Well done, I RST. Oh man, things are going on, but they've still got the, ex uh, the other caliber battery coming, which is. And you see another caliber. So they managed to uh, take care of the first uh, wave, and now there's a second wave coming here. But I think I will uh, stop it here. Uh, it has been a lot of talk from my side. I hope you enjoyed that. We talked a little bit about tactics and uh, how you can employ different kinds of uh, weapons. That is things that everyone needs uh, to think about when they are in the military and fighting these kinds of war. Uh, so basically it was a very high risk maneuver by the Russians. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that it was very, very... Uh, uh, likely that this would happen this way, but of course it's always interesting to use these kinds of war games as a uh, talking point to discuss uh, how it can uh, go. But I will end it there. Thank you so much for staying till the end. Please do me a solid, give me a like uh, at the video, and subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you want to support me by buying me a coffee to make this possible, you have the link to coffee uh, down in the description below. You also have my newsletter there if you want to receive some updates from me from time to time. My social media is also linked here. Uh, Max Wilman. So thank you so much for watching and until next time as always fly safe.